please. How you doing? Good to see you, man. Full disclosure, I was going to go see Nikki, but I came to see you instead. So, uh, <laughs> okay, well, I'll glad to honest, have you, my man. I like it. No, I've heard you speak What's before. What's your name? I'm Derek. Derek. I live here in Derry. I'm a transplant from um, Philadelphia. I moved up here about 20 years ago. So real quick, so uh, I'm, I'm almost 50 years old. I have kids that are twin boys that are 26 years old. You're young. My kids are only 10 years younger than you. How do you plan to reach the younger crowd? Because all of us in here are about the same age, and we've had our core values and beliefs for the same age. I mean, for the same for, for a long time. How are you going to reach the young people? That that's critical, critical for any race, and that's where for many years, even when I lived in Philadelphia, I said, how are how are the Reds going to reach out to all this blue? What's your plan to reach out to the young people? That's 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 a key demographic. Absolutely, and, and not just a demographic for this election. It is the demographic for the future of our country, by definition. So we share something in common. I also have two sons. I wouldn't be in this race if I didn't have kids. There's no way I would have been in the headspace to think about doing what I'm doing. It is to reach their generation that I care. And in order to solve a problem, you've got to see it with clear eyes. Kevin's right. I am an optimist, but I don't believe in like a blind, fake optimism. You've got to see the problem with clear eyes in order to find a way to the actual solution. The problem I see in our kids' generation, less than 16% of Gen Z says they're even proud to be an American. We have a 25% recruitment deficit in the U.S. military last year. It's actually a survey in the last month. It's a very well-conducted survey across young Americans that found 60% of young Americans would rather give up their right to vote than to give up their access to to TikTok. Not kidding you. So, so that's the state of affairs that we're starting from. Here's my view. I'm going to tell you how I do it as a candidate, and then I'm going to tell you about, from a policy perspective, how do we revive that missing national pride. As a candidate, I think we need to level up as a party. Okay, we talk about free speech to roomfuls of people who agree with us. Well, you want to practice what we preach. That's why when I come here, we go to New England College. I have a room full of, I don't know if you guys have been to New England College. Roomfuls of students that mostly don't agree with the things I have to say. But I'll tell you what, I'm not sure they've all made up their minds yet either. Right? What did I say? Young people are hungry for purpose and meaning. They're hungry for a cause right now. So what are they being served up by the other side? Go to Ben and Jerry's and order a cup of ice cream with some social justice sprinkles on top. Make yourself feel good about yourself. Well, you don't satisfy a moral hunger with fast food. They're hungry for the real thing. And this is what the left is very good at. You've got to give credit where credit's due. They will take that hunger and they'll give you a vision of identity. Race, gender, sexuality, climate. Well, that fills a starvation for hunger and purpose. Climate is just the new religion. Well, what are we doing? We're criticizing that stuff with our brains, right? We're saying, well, here's why that's hypocritical and why that's wrong. And the climate agenda is actually bad for our economy. And I agree with all that. Of course, that's true. But that doesn't, reach some, that doesn't reach a young person in the hole in their heart. Right? If you hold the size of God in your heart and God does not fill it, something else will instead. The same can be said for belief in a nation. So if the left is talking about race, gender, sexuality, climate, I want us to be talking more about the individual. There's only one you. There will only ever be one you, Derek. You're not riding some tectonic plate of group identity. You are you, endowed by our creator with your free will to achieve whatever you want with your hard work and dedication. The individual, the family, the best known form of governance to mankind, the nation, that I'm a citizen of this nation, not some nebulous global citizen somewhere, and yes, that we are one nation under God. Individual, family, nation, God. That defeats race, gender, sexuality, and climate any day of the week. That's what we're running to. We can't just be running from something. We're running to something. And I see young people across this country responding to that. And I've adopted a commitment in this campaign. I want all of you to hold me to it. I want all of you to hold the other candidates to it too. In our party, and you know what? The Democratic Party should follow along. It is the talk to everyone policy. I'm not running to lead a political party. I'm running to lead a nation. So whether it's NBC News or CNN or far left or far right or One America News to CBS News, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk 
to everybody because that's what it means to lead a nation. We're going to the south side of Chicago where I went a month ago, a place where not even Republicans go, even Democrats don't go there anymore. Two weeks ago, I was in Kensington in Philadelphia. I've traveled to India in the 1990s, rural parts of India. I have not seen drug-ridden poverty like I saw in Kensington two weeks ago. Ronald Reagan did this. He went to the South Bronx in his lead-up to the 1980 landslide that he delivered. So I think that's what we've got to do. As, as, a can as candidates, we've got to show up. There are other candidates in our Republican primary who I hope change their mind on this, and I'll applaud them if they do, who said they won't talk to NBC News because they're not nice to them. Well, I refuse to say, if, if I'm asking you to sit across the table from Xi Jinping, I better be willing to sit across the table from Don Lemon or Chuck Todd, which I've done. <laughs> and neither of them is on the air <laughs> anymore, either. <laughs> and then from a policy perspective, and here we could have a much longer conversation, but I'll leave an idea, I'll leave it at, least, at least a North Star with you. The North Star is this. Young people do not value a country that they simply inherit. We value a country that we have a stake in creating, in building, in knowing something about. I think that every high school student across this country should be required to pass the same civics test that every immigrant has to pass in order to become a voting citizen of this country. Full stop. 